Hello everyone, my name is Luis Camacho. I'm a PhD student of Leticia Aviles at the University of British Columbia. And today I'm going to talk to you about how tree hopper behavioral strategies revealed potential macroecological patterns in predation. We know species rely on an array of adaptations to contract predation, among which behavioral strategies can play an essential role. For instance, tree hoppers are a group of sap-sucking insects that avoid predation by relying on behavioral strategies revolving around maternal care and then mutualism. In species with maternal care, mothers actively defend their brood against predators and parasitoids using a combination of behaviors that range from simply sitting on top of their egg clutch to sophisticated communication systems that help mothers engage predators with an array of, uh, an array of attacks. Tree hopper species associating with ants exhibit the classic ant emipteran mutualism, where tree hoppers offer honeydew to ants in exchange of having their lives spared, as well as obtaining their defensive services against other predators. In this study, we studied tree hopper anti predator behaviors along the elevational gradient of the Andes, where communities are exposed to different levels of predation and availability of ant partners across elevations. We expected tree hopper anti predator investment to be proportional to the predation pressure they encounter across elevations, and whether they invest in maternal care or ant mutualism would be dependent on the presence of ants. For the latter, we tested if investment in ant mutualism depended on the availability of ants as partners to provi provide protection, or how much predation in the environment is exerted by the mutualist ants themselves. To do this, we first assessed the ecological conditions tree hoppers encounter across elevations, by sampling two 4,000 meter elevational gradients on the eastern and western slopes of the Andes of Ecuador. We used live fly baits to measure predation rates and the proportion of predation exerted by the community of mutualist ants. We also used sugary baits to measure the availability of mutualist ants in the environment as partners. We identified the tree hopper communities occurring across elevations based on museum collections. We then used natural history information to determine each species' anti predator investment. Tree hopper species can exhibit a combination of maternal care and ant mutualism at different life stages. We used this information to score each species' overall anti predator investment and investments in maternal care and ant mutualism separately. We found tree hopper behaviors shifted across the elevations. In this graph, we show bars representing the proportion of species exhibiting different behavioral strategies within tree hopper communities. We can see that communities at the lowlands are dominated by species relying on ant mutualism, whereas communities in the highlands are dominated by species relying on maternal care. We found that whether tree hopper communities invested in ant mutualism or maternal care dependent on the activity of ants. In this graph, we see in the y-axis the ratio of ant mutualism to maternal care investment within a community, meaning that points closer to one represent communities where most investment goes to ant mutualism rather than maternal care, and the opposite for points closer to zero. In the graph in the left, this is plotted as a function of the availability of ants in the environment, and we can see that despite there is a positive relation, uh, the fit is a little off. On the graph on the right, on the other hand, investment is plotted as a function of how much of the total predation in the environment was exerted by the ants. And we can see that the fit here is nearly perfect. This suggests tree hopper ant mutualism is acting more as a strategy to prevent predation from the ants rather than to obtain their defensive services against other predators. And whether tree hoppers invest in maternal care or ant mutualism is an adaptation to qualitative changes in predation across elevations. We also found that the overall tree hopper anti predator investment did not decrease at the same rate as predation rates across elevations. In this graph, we can see that in the line in red, the anti predator investment decreased only above 2500 meters. And this was despite this abrupt decrease in predation rates, which are virtually nothing above, above 1,500 meters. This pattern suggests that low predation rates at high elevations are still ecologically relevant for tree hopper communities to justify their sustained anti predator investment. But something happens above 2,500 meters that communities seem to not require to defend against predators anymore. 
we think this pattern could occur because elevation is fundamentally a gradient of temperature and primary productivity, which have a universal effect in ectotherms across all traffic levels. Lower temperature and productivity at higher elevations have been linked to lower predation rates, but it should also limit prey activity and ability to replenish their numbers when consumed by predators. So as elevation increases, the negative effects on predators and prey should, should cancel out. However, at the highest elevation, productivity may no longer be able to sustain a predator trophic level, which may release tree hoppers from the need to invest, invest against predation anymore. I hope you find this study interesting. Thank you for your attention. I also thank my lab and collaborators, as well as funding agencies that made this study possible. Thank you all for your attention.